Her disappearance horrified the nation. Earlier this month, 33-year-old Sarah Everard vanished after leaving a friend's house in Clapham, South London. Six days later, serving police officer PC Wayne Cousins was charged with her murder. It triggered a national conversation. How safe do women feel walking on the streets of Britain? For many, the answer was, too often, not safe enough. I just wanted to be here today to stand in solidarity with all women. Um, I just, it's really, really upset me what's happened. Thousands gathered for a vigil which police had called illegal during lockdown. In a short space of time, it went from being peaceful to chaos. The pictures raised questions about the Metropolitan Police's conduct, with many women criticising what they believed to be a heavy-handed approach. The Mayor of London condemned the police response to the Sarah Everard vigil, and others called for the resignation of Met Chief Dame Cressida Dick. The images from that vigil of women being handcuffed spread like wildfire on social media. They shaped people's views and opinions of the police. And today's report supports that, with the inspectorate saying the public confidence in the force has suffered as a result of what happened that night. And a more conciliatory approach to events would have served its interests better. But today the Met was exonerated after an independent review concluded it had acted appropriately. In a report, the official policing inspectorate said police officers at the vigil did their best to peacefully disperse the crowd. Police officers remained calm and professional when subjected to abuse and police officers did not act inappropriately or in a heavy-handed manner. The police were damned if they do and damned if they didn't when it comes to this protest. They tried their damnedest uh, to enable the visual to take place in these ter terrible COVID times. Uh, and unfortunately, there were some elements there that were determined uh, to cause trouble. But the police could have, if they were inclined to do so, and if they were supported by the government, they could have walked away and let it happen, and people would have just moved on and made their point. But the force didn't escape criticism. The watchdog said officers didn't inform senior members of the team about the Duchess of Cambridge's arrival and that they only found out about it after seeing her on the news. It also said there was insufficient communication between police commanders about changing events on the ground. However, some feel the police weren't criticised enough. I was at the, the vigil and I was very, very disappointed at the response and the final decision by the watchdog. I mean, the message therefore is clear that the safety of women is not the priority. Um, the reputation of the Metropolitan Police is a priority. So when you go to these events to protest, you would expect the police to be extra sensitive about the fact that, well, it's a Met officer who um, is accused. So let us treat this situation um, with regard and recognise that women are feeling unsafe. The report makes clear a peaceful and reasonable intent of many was overshadowed by the malign actions of a few. To their critics, the police stand accused of using their powers irresponsibly. To others, it's the irresponsibility of troublemakers that's the issue. Of course, there will be more demos to test their response. Well, that was Seema Katecha, and joining us now is Sir Peter Fahey, who was Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police for 34 years, and Anna Burley, one of the organisers of the Clapham Vigil, who was threatened with arrest and a £10,000 fine. Um, Sir Peter, can I just get your sense of whether you um, agree with the findings of the report today? Well, at the end of the day, you know, the, uh, the people carrying out the review have had access particularly to all the body camera footage. Uh, every officer now wears a, a camera on their body which films everything that they're doing, um, all the, the sound, what they say, what other people say to them. Um, they clearly interviewed uh, lots of the officers that were there uh, and interviewed the organisers. Um, and, and, you know, they've given their view. Um, I think the police were in a very difficult position, particularly because of the confusion over the legislation and particularly because they weren't able to do what they would normally have done, which would have been to negotiate with the organisers of a protest, because uh, under the coronavirus legislation, to organise such a protest itself was an offence. 
thankfully that changed on Monday. So for all future protests, as would normally happen and happen before the, these COVID regulations, the police will be able to talk to the organisers and hopefully there'll be more agreement. But I, I'm pleased that the officers on the ground who are faced with a very difficult situation um, have had their ac actions exonerated. But that doesn't really deal with the wider issue about women's confidence in policing overall. Right. Well, let me turn to Anna Burley. Are you able to accept the findings, Anna? I am. Um, no, it's a really disappointing report. And actually, uh, we poured a lot of time into feeding into the investigation and we don't see any, any of our feedback really reflected in there. I don't think it's an exoneration of the of the police at all. Um, I think the report does point to the fact that there were opportunities to engage with organisers in advance. Um, and I just want to challenge something that um, uh, your previous speaker just said, that it isn't unlawful to organise an assembly under the Human Rights Act, and it never has been. And the court case showed that their failure to engage with us was the unlawful part. A blanket ban on, on protest isn't, isn't lawful. Peter Fahey uh, ended by talking about trust uh, that, that women will have uh, in the Met Police as a result of either protest or the findings of the report. What is your sense? Um, I think this whole sorry saga started with a lack of trust. We had pictures of a missing girl on every lamppost in my local neighbourhood and police knocking on doors telling women that they need to stay at home for their own safety. And part of the drive to want to reclaim our public spaces and come together in a, in a peaceful vigil on Clapham Common was to express our dissatisfaction and, and frustration at the fact that yet again, the, the onus has been put on women to deal with violence against women when actually the problem isn't women. We don't need to change our behaviour. It's the people who perpetrate violence against women. So Peter, do you accept that um, from the, the perspective of, of perception, this is the worst possible outcome? Because it was all about women asking to feel safer on the streets and they ended up, uh, you know, with, with the police. Instead of looking at their own behaviour, there wasn't even a slap on the wrist. Well, I think, you know, the, the report does give a balance too. And I think, you know, I, I, I personally, I think the best thing we can say is the, uh, the legislation is confused, which didn't help the police in this instance. Um, I think it's good that the report has recognised those uh, operational officers on the ground did the best they could. Uh, but your, the, your, your other speaker is absolutely right. There is a far bigger problem uh, about the confidence that women have in the criminal justice system and the pitiful low figure uh, rate at the moment, for instance, for the prosecution of rape. Now, and I know that's why, you know, the, the senior officers in the Met, particularly Preta de Dick, you know, will we'll absolutely um, not see this as some form of victory, but we'll be really concerned at the far wider issue, absolutely about that issue of confidence of women, uh, but also, you know, the real weakness in the criminal justice system to achieve prosecutions, which, you know, are all feeding into... Um, this reluctance of victims to come forward and, 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 and make complaints. What, what was very noticeable was that uh, local Lambeth police were praised, forces across the country um, had, had calm and, and uh, easy, you know, vigils that night. Is, it, is there a particular problem with the Met and, and community policing? Is that something that you have noticed in your career? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, th there was a particular issue around Clapham, fully understandable, but that was where uh, Sarah Everard had gone missing from uh, and where, you know, this awful crime had uh, had occurred. Um, so there wasn't that same level of emotion in other places like Manchester. But obviously we've seen, you know, the difficulties around the police and the protest in, in, in Bristol. You know, policing protests is always difficult and the police always have in mind that the way you police a protest... Um, will have a, you know, a longer term impact on that level of confidence. I come back to it that, you know, the big problem the police have had uh, is they've not been able to engage and negotiate with those carrying out protests as they would normally have done. You know, week on, week out, mm. the Metropolitan Police deal with many, many protests in London. Um, many, most of them that go unnoticed. And, but and there was a uh, level uh, of emotion and, 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 and concern here which obviously contributed to what happened. Sorry about that. Uh, Anna, I think that one of the things that the report says is that actually after a day of, of policing uh, that sort of turned into nightfall, they then spent an hour asking people politely, gently to go home, and, and it was the refusal that sparked the actions. I mean, was this just a clash of, of, of sort of, you know, too, too much sort of um, 
I suppose, you know, t too much hard, hot feeling at a, at a very, very difficult moment. I, I wasn't there at that point. I had been threatened by the Metropolitan Police of being charged under the Serious Crimes Act uh, for seeking to organise a vigil for a girl who um, was allegedly um, abducted and murdered by, by a police officer. So when we look at sort of the appropriateness and proportionality of policing, we need to look at the run up to the event, not simply the event itself. It was disproportionate and it was not constructive. Um, and we, we sought to engage with the police from the, the get go. I think um, what we have been clear about is that by failing to engage with organisers and by just writing off all forms of protest as unlawful, they made the event more dangerous than it needed to be. We had, um, you know, collectively as organisers, we've got decades of experience of working with the police, by working with the council, other public bodies, yeah. by organising communities. And, and we brought that experience to the police and asked to work with them okay. uh, to organize stewards to have qr codes on trees to enforce social distancing and mask wearing um lots of lots of different things that would have made that a safe and peaceful event um by failing to engage with us they created a search situation in which um that didn't happen anna berlin peter Fahey, thank you very, very much indeed thank you